It's Monday, December 23rd, 2019. And I'm Sven Gustafson. This is your Daily Detroit. Well, and I'm Jer Stays. Today, we head over to Hammer and Nail in Detroit's Midtown. Randy Walker, Devin O'Reilly, and well, both of us talk to Rick Palger, the general manager, about this really unique bar across the street from the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Well, let's just get right into it, shall we? So pull up a bar stool and pour yourself a drink. I am really excited to welcome Rick Palger to the table. He is the general manager. He is somebody who's helping make all this mid-century modern beautifulness happen. Welcome to Daily Detroit. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice place you got here. Thank you very much. So how long have you been open now? Uh, We opened in mid-October. Mid-October. Yeah, so just a couple months. You're open um, happy hour right now going on, obviously, but uh, you guys open five days a week. uh, Seven days a week, yeah, right out of the gate. So uh, Monday through Saturday, we're open four to midnight, Mm -hmm. and then Sunday we're just doing four to ten right now. So tell us about the the bar and kind of the idea and concept behind it. Sure. The the building was uh, sort of late 60s, uh, and they wanted the concept behind the bar to be sort of mid-century modern, kind of Mad Men-inspired 50s and 60s. Uh, so what we did with the drink program is we went back through and did a lot of research to find out what were the most popular drinks from back then, what were some drinks that maybe have been forgotten since then, and then we looked at how can we make those drinks either better or more interesting. So if we found an interesting drink, say like the Moonwalk, which is one that we found that was served to the Apollo 11 astronauts when they landed, uh, that drink was already very good. When they landed uh, yeah, right back so, on Earth, not yeah. on the moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not on the moon. Uh, so yeah, we found that drink, and that drink was already very good, so we just kind of left it. But I don't think many people had heard of it, and the story kind of carries itself. So we presented that drink on the menu just as it was. Uh, but then we took something like a Blue Hawaii, which is sort of a rum, tiki, pineapple, blue curacao thing, mm. and we did something with blue spirulina uh, as kind of a tincture to, to help color the drink, but in a more natural way. So we're trying to take some of that, you know, unnatural coloring and stuff like that out of it and make the drink healthier a little bit and a little bit more uh, interesting. Nice. And I see uh, your bartenders have uh, very distinctive kind of uniforms. Can you talk a little bit about that? For sure. Yeah, we, we kind of researched uh, some of the old uniforms and ended up on kind of that, uh, that Hollywood slash soda jerk Maybe a little bit of the shining guy in there. <laughs> you know, that, 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 you know that Hollywood comment makes a lot of sense because I think about the bars that I've been to. This feels very West Coast. It feels yeah. very California. Yeah. When I've been to Los Angeles, you know, I actually interned in Hollywood. Sure. Like this is, I get the vibe that I was trying that I couldn't quite place it, but that makes perfect sense now. Yeah, yeah. We we almost we almost landed on the red and black jacket, like the red jacket with the black lapel. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, just like I don't the know, we just felt like that. Yeah, we felt like this is a little bit more relaxed yeah uh, so it's kind of a white coat with a with a black bow tie um it almost yeah. kind of has like a uh, your doctor will serve you now sure. sort of vibe yeah. <laughs> <For> sure. <laughs> Get a lot of mad scientist comments things like that yeah so how are you finding this location so we are just to give people an idea we're just we're on wood we're just north of mac avenue we're right across from like the dso the garden theater there's you know, residential around us. In fact, this building itself is a recently redone residential development. There's actually people living upstairs. H- how are you finding this location? It's been really good. We've gotten a lot of good press before we opened. And so we're getting some people come over f- after a show from the DSO. Um, they're still kind of trying to tap into that a little bit more, get some of the uh, the after theater crowd over here. Uh, we definitely get some of the residents down here, though. It's uh, pretty nice to have a bar this cool in your basement. So, uh, <laughs> but there's uh, 70 apartments in the in the building, so we have we definitely have a lot of a lot of people in here already. And before we go uh, too far into this, yeah. uh, you're known at your hammer and nail, and sure. you're known for the beautiful neon animated i guess it's almost like yeah. an animated gif neon For sign sure. yep. yeah, used- animated gif in reality right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a precursor to an animated <laughs> gif uh in the analog world but um tell us the story about that because that's that that was what this building was known for yeah so this this building used to be the professional plaza it was like a union carpenter and millwright yeah the carpenters union was on the very top floor and uh they had these neon signs on either side of the building there was one facing north one facing south uh so when the Roxbury Group took the building over. Uh, they definitely wanted to preserve that sign. It was such an iconic uh, image downtown. So what they did was they took uh, this one and brought it down, had it regassed and cleaned up, and had all the the workings kind of fixed up so that made sure it still worked correctly. Because for a long time it was just stuck on one hammer. I don't know if you guys yeah, remember, I do that. remember yeah. that. Yep. I mean, I actually used to live in Lafayette Park, and mm-hmm. I lived in one of the the high rises there. And I remember waking up 
uh, er, if I woke up early in the morning or if I went to bed from my bedroom, I could see the hammer and nail. Yeah. And in my mind, it was always different states of hammering and nailing. <laughs> right? right. Sometimes there would just be a nail. Sometimes there would be a couple hammers. Sometimes it would just be like stuck. But yeah. it was iconic and it was something that like you knew you were in Detroit and it had like it gives it this like working man's feel, which I think is completely appropriate for, sure. for, for the Motor City. Yeah, for sure. So they did a really cool thing with this. They brought this one in the building, and then they gave the other one to the Carpenters Union. Oh, okay. So the other neon is still out there, and it's uh, it's actually still owned by the Carpenters Union. So. Well, I wonder if that would be interesting, because they're coming up with a new headquarters building soon uh, out in the neighborhoods. They're actually moving some of their offices that were in the Renaissance Center, and they're going to be move, doing their own facility. So I wonder if you will see it back out there. That would be, be pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, but super glad to see it saved because I remember when the lights completely went dim and, mm -hmm. you know, I felt like we lost a, an icon of the city. So For sure. really glad to see it back. I yeah. mean, it, has that proved pretty popular among uh, patrons? A lot of people ask about it. Definitely popular. A lot of pictures get taken as soon as people sit, sit down. So uh, people love seeing it. There's all kinds of stories about uh, what the sign meant to people coming down here or leaving down here or, you know, living down here. Yeah, well, the thing is it's striking to me being so close to it is that although it's huge right mm -hmm. it goes from floor to ceiling i would have thought it to be even bigger from seeing it from so far away a right a lot of people say that a lot of people say that they thought it was bigger um i was surprised kind of by how small it was it was very very bright before okay uh, so we actually put a tent over it um and oh so that's the tint that's there's on a, there. there's okay. a little bit of a screen over the uh over the actual plexiglass okay um it was yeah it was real like face of God stuff. <laughs> it was very, very bright. So we, we, we had to tone it down a little bit. Let's let's go back to uh, the drinks side of uh, sure. Hammer and Nail, because this is a cocktail bar, as you mentioned much, before. Yeah. I wanted to go back and ask you about the, was it the Apollo 12? Is it, it was yeah, called? the uh, uh, the Moonwalk. The Moonwalk. Yeah. Okay, so what's in it? What, what, uh, so us. it's Grand Marnier grapefruit juice, a little bit of rose water, and then sparkling wine. It's very simple, kind of a kind of a French 75 variation. Yeah. Um, really refreshing, nice kind of easy drink and drink. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun uh, kind of going back and doing the research for it. And we've been very deliberate with our spirit selection and with the cocktails as well. So there's about 10 drinks on the menu. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all things that you've heard of, you know, uh, Black Russian and and uh, the Collins, Tom Collins and Old Fashioned, things like that. But then we found some fun ones like a pink squirrel. Yeah, tell us about the pink squirrel because so, that's not something you see No, we actually had often. to lobby to get a specific liqueur brought into the state so that we could buy it so that we could make this drink. So, really? Yeah. So we found uh, this drink is called the Pink Squirrel, and it's uh, creme de cacao uh, and heavy cream and then creme de noyau. And creme de noyau is sort of a, like an amaretto variant. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, Like an almond flavor? Yeah. So it's got some almond uh, extract, but in, in addition to that, they do uh, they toast peach and apricot kernels, and those wow. are inside the pit. So if you actually break open a pit of any stone fruit, there's a kernel inside. Okay. And if you toast that kernel, you can use it to flavor things. Um, gives it the sort of maraschino liqueur kind of vibe to it. So the closest thing I could say if you haven't tried it would be like if you took amaretto and then took a couple dashes of like Peychaud bitters and put them in there. Mm. So it's it's really sweet, but it also has kind of a, a bittering agent to it that kind of balances it out a little bit. I might have to um, try one of those before I really, leave They're really, really good. But yeah. yeah, we we found that there were only three companies in the States that made a creme de noyau at all. Two of them were kind of on the lower end side of quality, and then there was a, a very, very good one um, that we found, and we found that that supplier was already available in the state. And so we just went to our reps and asked how hard would it be to get this other mark brought in, and it landed, I think, a week before we opened. It was available in the state, so we were really lucky with that. But we're very proud of that one. That's awesome. pretty awesome. And then uh, I see you've got beer tap handles as well, so you've yeah. got draft beer here as well. Yeah, we kept the beers really simple. So the, the draft beer, we've got Guinness and Bass, so we can do you know, black and tans. Uh, and then we have two hearted on draft just because everybody needs an IPA. Um, but then we were also very, very deliberate with the rest of the beers. So the bottles are all the most popular breweries from the 50s and 60s. So it's like Blatt's, Stroh's, uh, Schlitz, Bud. We've got Altus from, uh, that just recently relaunched here yeah, in Detroit. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of the usual, usual suspects when you're mowing the lawn. <laughs> and those are all we, we have those all really really well priced so those are all of our bottle bottles and cans are three dollars oh wow so okay they, and that's that's something that a lot of people they come in expecting like oh it's going to be a cocktail bar we have cheap beer if you need it too so yeah and then the spirits are also very deliberately of the time so there's a lot of you know canadian club crown uh we only have a few bourbons but there were bourbons that were popular back then we only have 
two tequilas because people weren't drinking tequila back then. They were right. drinking, you know, mixed tequilas, which weren't as nice. So, and then uh, wine. What, what's your wine list look like? Wine I is you. very simple as well. We do kind of just usual suspects. You know, we got red and white. We got a cab, Pinot Noir, and then we do. Uh, uh, we have a nice wicker. Chianti, like the with the wicker ah, outside, because yes. it, it just looks the part. And know? so, is it all? I mean, what do people drink back in mid-century, like uh, Ernest and Julio Gallo or something? Yeah, <laughs> the wines were pretty. <laughs> yeah. So we've got we we've stepped it up a little bit. We weren't quite so deliberate okay, with the good. wines because yeah, it would yeah. be really tough. So one of the reasons we're here is actually our, you know, we jokingly call him our man about town, Devin O'Reilly, is a big fan of this place. And I got to say, Devin, so so why is it that you like this place so much and kind of calls to you? Well, there's an obvious convenience. I, I, I hang out here a lot, I would say. I might know somebody who lives in the building. But aside from that, I mean, I think as someone, you know, anytime I've been on, we've talked about a few things that I certainly appreciate. The mid-century modern vibe. Which yes. is awesome. As and, someone, and, and, and I will say that although it, you are not dressed that way today, almost every single time you end up on the show, you are dressed to perfection and probably could be ripped right out of one of those pages of back in the day. Well, you, yeah, usually you catch me kind of during uh, during the work week. Now yeah. we're kind of in a little more relaxed vibe, so that makes sense. But no, I mean, as a fan of the Buell Bar and London Chop House and places like that, Joe Muir's, um, this is really hits the mark on kind of the mid-century modern feel to it which I love. Um, as Rick mentioned, the, the cocktails are extremely kind of uh, period specific and so old fashions. They actually do, so they have a great old fashioned on the menu, but actually if you also just want the classic old fashioned, I would say if I, someone who's here more than once a week, let's say, their classic old fashioned is also really good. All right, you so let's talk about it too. I love old fashioned, so let's talk about the differences between the classic and then what's kind of on menu for you guys. Sure. So, a classic old fashioned, you're just going to have spirit, bitters, and a little citrus peel and some sugar. That's pretty simple. Our classic is just uh, we do a two to one rich simple syrup, throw some bourbon in there, a little, little Angostura bitters, and orange peel, and then we serve it down. And we're pretty proud of that. It's very simple and people seem to like it a lot. Uh, for the old fashioned on the menu, Again, I wanted to go sort of um, a play on that uh, that kind of Wisconsin old fashioned, where it's the you know brandy, the, uh, not brandy. Okay. But good, good. I, I, yes, I've, I've yes. made a lot of drinks yeah. in my day for Wisconsin people. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. Wisconsin, Wisconsin I, is definitely brandy. Weird specific, stories. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a whole episode in itself. Right, right. I mean, I started bartending close to twenty years ago, and an old fashioned back then was you know cherry, orange, yep. orange slice. And you muddle those two together with maybe a sugar cube. I'm so glad we. Some, I'm so glad we've. Oh, you're, you are. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, throw some uh, throw some bitters in there, whiskey, and then top it with like Seven Up sometimes, soda water sometimes. Yeah, that's um, right. So I, we wanted to kind of pay homage to that drink, uh, but make it more interesting and actually make it delicious. Make it yeah, good. And so yeah. So what we did is we took uh, black cherry syrup uh, from like the. Uh, Maraschino, really good dark Maraschino much, cherries. Much better choice because it actually infuses some of the flavor, whereas like the For cheap sure. Maraschino. My experience with like the 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 terrible old fashioned, and I do judge bars by their old fashioned. Yeah. Like I will walk in and I'll be the first thing I order, and what your the train wreck you were describing in the beginning, like that's where I'm like, oh okay, because you don't get any cherry flavor, you just get a cherry yep. like thing. Yeah, it's not, and those aren't actually food. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. I would. I think uh, so. Their old fashioned, the one you're talking about yeah. on the menu. It's a more refreshing take in an old fashioned. I would say that. I'd also say it's almost like a gateway. It's a gateway old fashioned or a gateway whiskey drink. For sure. So again, my fiance who doesn't really drink a lot of bourbon loves the old fashioned on the menu because it's kind of like a smoother, a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a way to kind of like introduce yourself to bourbon. Yeah. Whether, whether whereas the more classic old fashioned, just give me the bourbon. I want to taste that. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, this is a little bit, a uh, little bit more easy drinking. So we do the black cherry syrup for the cherry. Uh, we make a citrus sorbet in house. It's sort of a reusable uh, syrup. So what we do is we take all of our uh, citrus peels that we we trim off our garnishes and things like that, and uh, we cover those in sugar and let the sugar pull the oils out of the out of the peels. And then we make a syrup with that, with the juice from uh, the peeled fruit. Nice. Oh, wow. And so that turns into sort of, if we froze it, it would be kind of like a sorbet. But we, we keep it just in liquid form, and we mix that with the black cherry syrup. And then it's just uh, Crown Royal, orange bitters, and then we garnish it with the cherry. Nice. And, uh, but we actually got real food versions of those cherries. Okay, so, so, talk, so for the uninitiated, let's talk yeah. about the real food version versus the not real food. Sure. What does that mean for somebody listening who doesn't know this? So those bright red maraschino cherries that are in all the bars uh, for years now, those actually aren't classified by the FDA as food. It's like it's like Whoa. a bleached like gelatin kind of food product that is then 
hyper colored into that into that red. So recently, there's been a company called Filthy Filthy Foods who have gone through all of these bar things and tried to step that up a notch. And so they took real cherries, and then they're colored, but they're these big, plump, real cherries that they've made to look like the old school maraschino cherries. Right. So that we can have these fun garnishes, but you know, not be gross. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are obviously in the holiday season uh, now. We're talking about old fashions, which is a nice winter drink. But um, you guys, got any like uh, holiday themed cocktails, specials, or anything running? Eggnog or anything? Like yeah, that? we don't. We, we're not really doing anything like that. We kind of uh, just because the the drinks are so specific. Uh, we sort of opened with the menu that's going to be the menu for a while. We're not really interested in in doing like seasonal okay. uh, changes to the menu. Um, but we have really talented bartenders and we can always go off menu for, for things like that. So I got a couple as I, I'll jump in as the man about town who knows yeah. their menu kind of back and forth here, but I will tell you that they may not have the holiday drinks, but they have some very warming drinks. So the nail is one of my favorites. It's and Rick can probably, probably refresh me, but it's scotch and is it Drambuie? Yeah. Oh, like so a it's, rusty nail. it's a play on a rusty yeah. nail. But what we did is I took, because uh, rusty nails are pretty cloyingly sweet with, yeah. that, with that Drambuie. So those are usually equal parts, scotch and Drambuie. Um, there's a really fun product out of Louisville called Copper and King's Brandy. And the, they use they actually use Michigan grapes and they make uh, make these brandies. And it's um, uh, an immature brandy. So it's an unaged brandy. So it's got that kind of fruit, kind of uh, kind of brandy characteristic to it. But it's... it's uh, it's a little bit sharper. Okay. And so what I did was cut, kind of cut the drambuie with the brandy. And because it's not a rusty nail anymore, we just call it the nail. But it's, a, cool. it's definitely a, a more approachable kind of uh, booze forward version of the. And you still get that scotch taste too. Yeah, which, yeah. Which I appreciate. Um, and then the nitro, uh, the nitro white Russian. This is one probably probably the drink I'm the most proud of. Uh, Desmond and I worked really hard on this. We wanted to do a version of a white Russian. Um, but the rules that we had set for ourselves coming up with the drinks on the menu was, is it interesting and is it better? So if it, if we took an old classic like a white Russian and we made it a different way, it had to be better at least. You know, more interesting is whatever. But if it wasn't better than the original, then we had to keep working on it. So white Russians are really good. I don't know if you know that. I'm, I, <laughs> but, you know, I, I have enjoyed quite a few white Russians. Yeah. For some reason, my dating career involves dating a lot of women who like white Russians. Okay. I don't know why, and that's how I've been uh, introduced to them. And I have found a wide variety in bar white Russians. I find the sure. best white Russians are often the ones made at home, and a lot of bars miss the mark. So I'm okay. really excited about this. Yeah, we start. So we started making them, and we, you know, we did very, very measured, you know, careful versions of the drink and it was always really good just the way it was so in order to kind of step that up we decided that we were going to do the coffee liqueur on our own so we do our own oh. version of the coffee liqueur nice um Kahlua is a rum-based uh, coffee infused liqueur, liqueur basically so we took a verna which is an italian amaro amaro mm -hmm. are kind of uh, bittersweet they're usually uh, enjoyed after a meal to kind of right and kind of settle the stomach things like that um so we took a verna and did a cold brew coffee with motor city Ooh, uh, and I love the uh, cold from, brew. With the, with the Motor City from Great Lakes. And uh, yeah, so we did a really strong cold brew into the Averna, add some rum to that, add some sugar to that. That's our coffee liqueur. You know, that's really interesting because there have been multiple like coffee collaborations I'm seeing around town. I think that seems to be a thing that's happening mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So we did the coffee, uh, the coffee infusion, and then we put the whole thing on nitro. So it's in a tank and it pulls off the same line as, uh, as like a Guinness. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's got that same kind of like tiny bubble, nice little feel to it. And then it comes off the draft line just like that. And then if you want a white Russian, we do sort of a cold foam uh, okay. uh, for the top of it. And it just really, it's, it's a really beautiful drink. I would say that for listeners at home, do this white Russian. Do not do what I did and get white Russians at a dive bar in Hamtramck. It's generally <laughs> a bad, a bad idea. I won't, I won't call it out because they, we never should have ordered a white Russian from this bar. It's one of the bars that are like two ingredients, no more. Um, but yeah, this is this sounds like a delicious drink. Yeah, it's pretty good. And so, Rick, uh, what time do you guys throw open the doors uh, every day for business? Uh, every day we're open at 4 p.m. 4 p.m.? Yep. All yep. right. You're online. You guys have a website or Facebook? Yeah, we've got uh, hammerandnaildetroit.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram. It's all Hammer and Nail Detroit. We're pretty easy to find. One of the most Instagrammable bars. We always talk about that. Oh, for mind, sure. But. I've, oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've posted many though. stuff, but we talked about that a few times about Instagrammable bars. I mean, you're not going to get a better one than. than well, people here. are looking for that. I mean, they, they that's a thing. That's a real thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on well, Daily Detroit. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure talking to you. Well, that'll do it for today's show, comrades. Hope you enjoyed today's show. 
Let us know what kinds of cocktails you're whipping up over the holidays or just whatever's on your mind by contacting us at dailydetroit at gmail.com. And if you like what you're hearing, remember to tell a friend and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Or if you're feeling very generous for the holiday season, you can support us at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Your support means so much to us and helps keep this project going. And thanks. I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jarrah Stays. Until next time, take care of each other. We'll see you around Detroit.